The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Shall it show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. How sovereign we are over the old sin nature just lost its power and the 40 absolutes given to each and every believer at the moment of salvation has really made known to understand this simple truth the prince of darkness will grim we tremble not for him nor fear for him his rage we can endure though it is roaring like a lion because we know his doom is sure and we know he has fell even from this angelic conflict. And this is what we need to understand in the case of Job as well. Satan understood Job. He knew the workings of that corrupt nature which his own life had formed in the Garden of Eden. He had said that Job feared God for nothing. Has not thou made a hedge about him? Touch all that he hath, and see if he will not curse thee to thy face, skin for skin, yes, all that a man hath will he give for his life. And serious and terrible is the thought that he knows us so thoroughly, and understands the springs of thought and will within us. But though Satan thus understood Job, he did not understand God. The counsels of grace are about him. And by reason of this, he has been always in the history of this world, defeating himself by thinking that he was getting the advantage of us. For he has to meet God in the very thing he does and the purpose he plans against us. But when we abide in his word, it is our Lord who leads us, though in these trials and temptations, like Job, to praise of his glory and his grace, to be a maximum glorification of Christ believer and endure any sort of chastisement or affliction, not suffering for the finitive will of, of our own volition, but to the divine will of Christ. Only when we get occupied with Christ, we know what is that suffering. And not just mere alleviation of the suffering through miracles or healings will cause a lot to be glorified. When Satan interfered with Adam in the garden to his confusion, he encountered God, and God's promise announced his own doom as told in Genesis 3, 14-15. When he provoked David to number the people, ornaments, threshing floor was discoursed, and the spot where mercy rejoiced against judgment became the place of the temple as told in 1 Chronicles 22-1. When he sifted the apostles as wheat, he was answered by the prayer of Jesus, and instead of faith failing, brethren were strengthened as told in Luke 22, 31 through 32. And above all, when he touched the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross, the very death he inflicted was his own perfect and accomplished destruction, as told in Hebrews 2.14. That is the same case which will happen even in our lives as well. When it wants to obscure you from the word of the Lord, it wants to allure you from biblical truth. Already we have been given the indwelling ministry of Lord God the Trinity. We have been told not to grieve him, not to squelch him. But rather we have been told to understand what is that we have in Christ. So that the power which reigns in us by attaining to the spiritual resurrection by the spiritual growth should really cause Satan to be afraid and even not to worry about you. Do you know why? Because positionally you have been made superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Experientially you need to grow up. That experiential process is what exactly Job was suffering through, is what David was going through, is what the apostles were amazed at. But ultimately, who will be the winner? Our integrity, our volition towards staying faithful in Christ should be the winning point. The same thing exemplified in the book of Genesis as well, when Adam, Satan thought it failed the first couple. Though it approached Eve and not Adam was a failure of a wrong thought, 
Lord did protect the first marriage and the first chastisement of punishment upon them by providing them a redemption solution. But ultimately, what did it happen? Satan got defeated with a curse. Ultimately, in the case of Job, what did Satan happen? It was proven a failure. Ultimately, in the case when the apostles were being really amazed around, Lord Jesus Christ's prayer upholded them. Ultimately, even though so many blasphemous people who are coming around, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's prayer, who prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing has really caused many people to be graced out graciously in Christ. Whatsoever Satan comes to reign over you, it can never reach to reign over you nor even touch you in Christ. Ultimately, dear brethren, the truth that we have in Christ you are being made superior positionally then to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. And Satan knew very well the very base of the fact of the truth. You are being made superior. And experientially you need to grow up. And that demands Bible doctrine to be resident in your soul. Job was occupied with Christ. Apostles were occupied with Christ. David confessed his sin back to God. Adam and Eve got back to the solution of Christ rather than their fig leaves. The human viewpoint. When they come safely under Christ, that is the moment they shall be saved. Because in Christ we have our salvation. In Christ we have our life. In Christ we have our breath. Satan wants to get out, getting to you, take out your mind from Christ, not to be occupied with him and look upon human viewpoint, look upon human problems and human solutions. The divine solution is the only solution. Human solutions are no solutions at all. The divine solution where we find is in the Bible doctrine. The divine solution, what we inculcate, the pure milk, the sincere word, the divine solution, what we communicate, the word of the Lord, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds from the mouth of Lord God Almighty. The divine solution is a strong meat. Only when you have been inculcated to truth, understanding the truth, comprehending the truth. No doubt, however pressure you have, however sufferings you go through, Ultimately, if you are in Christ, being occupied in Him, you are the Ultima to the praise of His glory in His grace. Peter was being told to follow Him. The result would have been more better if Peter would have occupied with Christ rather than just merely follow Him. Rather, by just merely following, men may fail. But being occupied in Christ, men will never fail. The same result what we can find to the people of Job, to the people of these apostles who were answered, and to the people who have been given the grace, though they have sinned against the Lord, like David, in numbering the people, Adam and Eve disobeying God's word. Even we, the church age believers, have also disobeyed God's word by not growing in his truth. Then too we have been graced out again. Then too we have been given this great truth again. Then too we have been getting to the point of consideration which Lord God Almighty wants in us to the purity of his soul. Like the believing sinner of David, confess your sins directly to God the Father in the privacy of your priesthood. Like helpless man doesn't know what exactly is happening in the life of Job or in the life of apostles, the way they were being tossed around like a wheat. Then to the prayer of the Lord, help them to be saved. If you are a minister, by the prayer of Christ you will be saved. If you are a believer, the trials and tribulations and the tumults which they are going around like Job, you will be saved when you are being with Christ. 
when I've been there in the word of the Lord, when I've been promised out to look the things that the Lord has promised for us in eternity past. And when you remember to the mind, when you've been in pressure, when you're evidence testing, no one's counseling or prayer will come for your aid, apart from the doctrine that you have learnt and put back to the resident of your soul in your activated human spirit. And this soul which has been activated, and this soul which has been given for you to understand the truth, is the ultimate, dear brethren, which the Lord has given for us in eternity past. This soul and spirit with its various slots has to be filled with the various categories of doctrine with the various information of isagogical as well as exegetical truth, so that when you are out from this earth, either through exit resurrection or the physical death whichever could come first, your soul and spirit has been completed, and your soul and spirit has been having a memnisco or of doctrine. And with this memnis call or of doctrine, either it is a people testing, thought testing, system testing, or catastrophical changes, in this angelic conflict with that Lord of Doctrine, you will ask, what is Satan? Satan doesn't have anything to be taken away from me. Now it is Satan who will rage like a roaring lion against me. Because it is the mental minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who has shown to this entire world the reigning power through his word. And that training power which we need to acquire is the spiritual resurrection in Christ. And if you are not able to get along to these things, dear brethren, the ultimate of your life is a failure. The ultimate of your concept is a failure. The ultimate of things that are happening around your life is an absolute sure out of a lie. And as long as you fail to understand these simple dogmatical truths, Lord, help you. Do you know why? Every church age believer being an ordinary person thumbed out as alakanic atheists, new spiritual spaces in Christ, new of a kind, has been given equal privilege and equal opportunity to be indwelled by the Trinity, not just by Lord God the Holy Spirit. You have been indwelled by Lord God the Father to make you to understand the protocol plan of God, to make you to understand and to execute this unique spiritual life, indwelling of Lord Jesus Christ for you, so that the Shekinah glory could shine forth the bright light in you. Our Lord said, I am the light of this world, and that light we need to take in. And why you have been given the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that it is your divine mentor who can make you to learn the entire doctrine, who can cause you to comprehend the truth. That's why Lord God, the Holy Spirit ministry has been given to you, so that you can understand more, more, more of doctrine. So that when doctrine has been fortified in your soul, no matter how our trials and temptations will come, because you have been occupied with Christ, the ultima of cognitive invincibility in the third adult spiritual stage of your unique spiritual life, followed by problem solving device number 10, which is occupation with Christ, plus evidence testing under two categories, which is towards life or towards the plan of God. If it is towards life like Job, if it is towards the plan of God, like the apostles suffered or our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ executed it on the cross. No matter what it comes, ultimately what is the doctrine of the nutrient? It is Bible doctrine taught categorically, isagogically, and exegetically over one dispensing technique known as dispensations. And where you learn this doctrine? The university, where is your church? Who is your teacher? Your dean, pastor, teacher is your dean. What are you? You are a saint, you are a professor in Christ. What do you teach? You teach to the angels, the entire doctrine, the much variegated, the manifold wisdom of doctrine. And why do you teach? Because you have been caused to that, to survive in this earth even after salvation. Until and unless you learn, you cannot teach. You remember from your soul, you cannot teach. And that's the process of which you have been kept alive. And ultimately, you will never be separated with the love of Christ, no matter what, says Romans 8, 38 and 39. Once and for all, you have been united with Christ. There is nothing that can be differentiated for you. But your own negative volition to learn God's word will differentiate for you, and it will really cause a great of difference for you at the judgment seat of Christ. Your own ignorance, fearing Satan all the time, 
worried about Satan tactics all the time. But not being ignorant of the cunning fables of Satan. Until unless you learn Bible doctrine, you cannot be cognizant of the cunning fables of Satan. And you know when you're going for your enemy, when you're going for your war, until and unless you know the methods and the techniques of your enemy, you cannot have an effective battle upon it. When you're going to invade a nation or a country, you learn everything of that country and then you go for your war, isn't it? We are into the greater war, which is a spiritual warfare. And this spiritual warfare, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, demands Bible doctrine. The map is your information, and Bible doctrine is your information. The guide is Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And until and unless Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlightens your enlightened eyes to understand the scriptures more in depth, to get back into fellowship with you all the time, to be controlled, and to learn, and to apply the truth, and to understand the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Till that time, you will be babbling around, worried whether I will be saved or not, whether my eternal security is guaranteed or not, if I'm not paying the tithes, will I go to heaven or not? If I'm not able to do good works, will I go to heaven or not? If I'm not able to take baptism, will I go to heaven or not? All these human good deeds will be absolutely burnt off. You have been called to become like a man, not like a kid. The kid wants the security, not a man. These are kiddish thoughts. Human good deeds will be burnt off. But Lord has told you, I've been saved by faith alone in Christ alone, by just believing in Him. No further kiddish thoughts to again think, Lord's word is not possible to save me. Let me do my own works and add some things there, like baptism, like good works, like XYZ attitudes. Let me add some things there. Let me be pure to them in some things there. So that Lord is not capable. Because when Lord has told Tetelestai in the Greek, that is not enough for me. And when you have even in your mind new doubts upon your salvation, how can you throw and understand that know and have enough faith that Satan is a defeated one for you. And you have been made at the moment of salvation itself positionally superior. Since you do not have enough faith upon your own salvation, you will never have enough thoughts upon your own growth. Why Lord has called you to the praise of His glory and His grace in this enlightenment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In this unique dispensation of the church age. In this unique dispensation of the church age being termed out each and every believer as Alec And in fact, you will really cause and you will make errors upon doubts. And you want to think this could be better for me. What the simple promises. And I don't deny for you to learn the whole doctrine, dear brethren. That is the duty. And do you know what? The spiritual resurrection is the application of the doctrine for you in your lives. There are enough men who want to stay morally pure, are like unbelievers as well. And they want to tell, if I'm a Christian, if I do not know the entire Bible, at least let me follow some of the two principles or three principles of Bible. But every believer has been called for the spiritual resurrection in Christ and to apply the entire principles of doctrine in each and every breath you take, in each and every step you put, or each and every thought you think. And effective thinking will come only when you have enough doctrine resident in your soul. But Satan never wants you to tell the truth. But it never wants you to communicate the truth. The result of apostasy in the pulpits, by its various ones, is the only purpose. Because this men, they have lost the teaching of isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation in the churches. This men, they have lost the true value and the importance of Bible doctrine in the pulpits. This men have not gained what it is to have in Christ the truth, what we are holding now in our hands. This man have entirely lost to the people for their carnal sentiments to be fulfilled, but not the truth that we have in our Lord. 
And that is what it is happening around, dear brethren. And that is what it is looking around in this church. Those great men who have come around, who think that Satan is great, Satan has been possessing you, Satan is doing this. They are great for Satan, but not for God. They are great for being agents of Satan, telling that you are demon possessed, you are doing this. Being a believer, there is no demon possession for a believer, dear brethren. And since they want to get their own works to be done, own promotions to be getting, own healings and credits to be got to their account, they change the word of the Lord to a lie. They have forgotten, right from the beginning of Genesis, Till to the point of the prayer of Christ for us. It is a believer in Christ who shall reign through his word. In Genesis, Adam and Eve reigned. Though David failed, it was he who reigned. We have apart from Genesis, the second great creation, Job. Job reigned through Christ. The word he said, though he utterly slay me, yet I will trust in my Lord. That's the occupation with Christ. David confessed he was being saved. Adam and Eve obeyed the word of the Lord for the salvation. They were being saved. But the angel and its creation which went through, like the Lucifer, rejecting the salvation then and then existed for them. They have been doomed to the eternal destruction, into the eternal lake of fire. They have rejected Christ. They have rejected the truth. Even the apostles who have been used by our Lord powerfully, Satan tried to throw them as wheat. The prayer of the Lord sustained for them. For in fact, even each and every believer for the church age, Lord prayed in John 17. And the great truth of all time, John 17, 17, sanctify them by the truth which they have given, which is the doctrine. And if there is no sanctification through doctrine, then there is no life in this church age. In the next episode, shall continue our discourse. Whether you want to be obedient for Satan and for the things not knowing the truth and thinking illusions or delusions that is left to you. And basing your myths, mythology upon an approved hypothesis that is left to you. The truth what we have is Bible doctrine, dear brethren. If you put your foundation upon this fact, you shall reign with Christ in the spiritual resurrection wherewith you have been designed in eternity past to the praise of his glory in his grace. So which way you go, dear brethren, you decide. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that believing upon Christ we shall have eternal life. And that is very simple gospel. Believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Inaudible in the privacy of your soul, when you take this decision, you shall have there itself this eternal life. The believers, the great mandate to preach the word, carry Sothon Lagan, be prepared in season and out of season, so that the truth what we have in our hands has to be inculcated to them by the ambassadorship, by the witnessing, because it is Bible doctrine alone that has been called. And whereas for the point of view, consideration for the church age pastors, it is to preach the word, Kerasothon Lagan, and guard the doctrine that has been given in our hands. And greater and above, we have been called for the Diamantrum of Witnesses, which is the indwelling trinity, and each and every pastor teacher who has been called. The word of the Lord is our indwelling trinity, and this word is our Diamantrum of Witnesses, which will stand at the judgment seat of Christ, whether we have been preaching the truth or not. And above all, we have the witnesses who could hear to our truth. And if there are no witnesses to our truth to hear, do not worry. We have the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to completely guide us. Because besides nature, it is the entire angelic host who shall hear. But it's our duty to preach the truth accurately, no matter what it comes. And this truth, what we communicate, is quite and quite essential for us. Like an unprofitable slave, that which is our duty to be done in the bond slave ministry for Christ, we have to do it. And whether you believe it or not, that is left to you. So which way you go, you decide. Whether you will fear the Satan, or you will say, there is nothing that Satan can take away from me because I am occupied in Christ. That is also left to you. 
So which way you go, you choose. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.